Hey, what's going on, Internet? So today I want to talk to you about how I'm able to ship more enterprise level projects using a structured approach to vibe coding um, in accordance to other types of approaches. So oftentimes you see there's two camps, right? There's people that think that vibe coding is a complete waste of time and it's not proper engineering. And you think that and then there's the other side where people are basically they're feeling the vibes too much, if you know what I mean. And there needs to be some sort of process and structure around this. Now, I've had many different types of processes around quote unquote vibe coding for the last probably year using these different tools. And I came across one approach in the last probably, I don't know, two months, three months that I found is the most effective out of all the things that I've tried so far. And what I wanna share with you is that process today. And I'm gonna walk you through that process in detail, walk you through all the prompts and show you exactly how I go through my process to get out enterprise level applications. Now, I'm gonna give a quick shout out for, to Harper because he's the one that wrote this. So he wrote this blog a month ago, two months ago. And he's walks through this process, both for um, greenfield projects where you're starting with nothing and then existing projects you're working on that have existing code bases. I'm going to walk you through the uh, greenfield approach and not the one that's existing code. Now, with this process, you're going to get three documents out of it. So you're going to get a spec, which covers what the product is and does. We're then going to get a blueprint that covers how to go about building said product. And then lastly, we're going to get a to-do list, which acts as a roadmap for our AI. And this is something I've talked about a million times, but I'll regurgitate it once more here, is when you build with AI, when you're writing code, it often gets lost in the code because its context window is so short. So we have our macro, which is the roadmap, and then we have our micro, which is the code that the AI is writing. And we want to start with the macro, and we want to then go into the micro as the code or as the AI writes the code. And as it goes about writing this code, it's eventually going to get lost because the context window is not you know, unlimited, at least not yet. And as that happens, we're gonna have to refresh that context window with the roadmap in mind so it knows to focus on the overall goal, which eventually loops back to the product that we're building. So we're gonna bring it back to the macro using our to-do list as a grounding mechanism to do so. So those are the three outputs and those are the kind of the reasonings behind each. And we're going to go into detail to each, but before I start this process of getting these three documents, I do a kind of a precursor step, which is research. And I found that oftentimes if you're building an app, you're likely going to have to pull out different data sources that might not necessarily be yours. So you might have to go to APIs, um, different data sets, et cetera. And I always recommend people think about what are the constraints for this application? And you want to bake that in to your initial spec, but you have to first research it. Now to do this, I recommend using different tools that have access to the internet. So you have Grok3, Claude now has a research for the internet, um, Perplexity and ChatGPT search. Those are the ones that I lean on. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna find, okay, what data sets do we need for our application to be successful? So if there's open source data sets you can pull, you need to figure out where they are, what the associated APIs are for those data sets, and any other types of documentation that's relevant for that. And you can probably use links inside of this instead of just copying the entire docs into it, but you can just put in links. Um, this is also referring to docs. So these docs could be for APIs. So maybe there are certain APIs that are unrelated to data sets, but have certain features and things that you need. So I recommend getting the updated um, URLs for each one of those docs and putting that into your eventual spec as well. And the last item here is, I think this is relation to APIs as well. So these are kind of the same. So those are very similar, we get docs for APIs that are relevant for our features. So that's the first step, doing some research and figuring out, okay, what data sets, APIs, documentation do I need to put constraints on the system that I'm building? And also maybe any languages that you wanna use. So if you wanna use Python in the back end, React in the front end, or something else, you wanna put that into the spec as well. So once we've done some research, it should only take probably 15 to 20 minutes. You've established what those are. You then wanna go through the process of writing your spec. And you're not going to write a bunch of stuff. You're just going to write some things. You'll first start with the intent. So what is the purpose of this application? What are you trying to create? And what's the intent um, of this application for the user and the end goal? And that same way of saying that is what's the job to be done for the user? So what uh, function are you pursuing with this application? And lastly, who is the user? And try to be specific, specific about the person that's using it, how they're going to use it based on the intent, and what the overall job to be done is for that application. And I want to give you an example of an app that I am actually working on right now. It's a kind of a little silly app that I'm working on. But it's a basic app that actually, before we get into here, I don't want to distract you. So the app that I'm building is a weekly to-do app. So oftentimes people have to-do lists. And I have stopped using to-do lists for about three years now. 
And every to-do list I have gets um, systematically incorporated into my calendar, so it's time blocked. So if I have an item on my list that, that equates to two hours, that's blocked into my calendar. So I work on it in that two hour time frame. And for me, that holds me more accountable and I get more stuff done that way. So instead of doing that, we can actually take that to-do list, run that through AI, have AI systematically figure out what the assessment uh, time frame reach task is, and put that into a calendar for us. And this is actually an idea I worked on with one of my buddies. All right, so now I have a general idea of what the app is, I'm gonna walk you through the spec. So this is a, a boilerplate prompt that we'll come to in a second, but down here is the general um, kind of content I've written out associated to items I mentioned previously. These are the things that you wanna write and then you rely on AI for the rest. So here you can basically, uh, you see that I've, like the high level um, statement for the app is at the top. Below that, I give some of the intent of what the app is and for the people using it. And then below that, I add features. So I think they're okay. When the user interacts with this product, what's going to happen, both from what they visualize and also what happens in the back end. So you can see that I'm asking for the app to review their existing calendar to make sure there's no conflicts. I'm also stating that during the onboarding phase, they should initially ask a few questions to constrain the type of um, timeframes they put out. So maybe I wanna take breaks at certain times of the day. Maybe I wanna take lunches. Maybe I wanna only work two hours at a time. Whatever other constraints that matter to you, the AI will incorporate that into what it does with uh, your calendar. And then I've left questions below for things that it should consider for that. Um, next I have a kind of a re restatement of the above. But also below that, I asked that the AI is able to accurately make an, uh, make an accurate assessment of how long it'll take to do each task. And that's going to be based off of the constraints I've given above. And also, another thing that I probably could include in there is like the constraints of humans in general, like sleep and stuff. Uh, okay, so below this, there's, uh, there should be a human validation step before you actually put anything into the calendar to ensure that we're not necessarily putting in things we shouldn't. Another restatement of how much time it should take to do each task. And this could be also human validated as well, asking if this is okay for them during the above step. And then also we want to we want to authenticate with Google so it can uh, automatically sync up to Google Calendar. So we'll start with Google Calendar. We can expand to other ones later. So this is a general spec. So we have features below it, and then we have the intent and the overall um, high-level statement at the top. So that's kind of the thing that you want to do prior to end doing anything else. And also in this step, I don't I don't have this listed out, but you could have URLs, doc links, um, APIs, etc. That I mentioned previously. Okay, so when we're doing the spec, when we're working through this process, you want to use a, a model that reasons well, but responds quickly. So you don't necessarily want to use O1 Pro or O1 Preview because it takes too long to get back to you on different types of asks. So I often recommend people use for at least now, I think it's O3 High Mini, it's like Mini High or High Mini, the naming is horrible. But basically this model here from OpenAI, because it, it's a pretty good reasoner and it responds pretty quickly. Now, when you do this, you're going to have a lot of back and forth with AI to create your spec because you're going to give them the document you've given it that I mentioned previously. And what we're going to do is we're going to prompt it. And the boilerplate, this prompt here is actually pulled from Harper's blog. And it's basically saying, I want you to ask me one question at a time and ensure that every question that I answer, you build on the previous answer for your next question. So my answer should inform what that next question should be. And then also remember only one question at a time. So the AI is going to interview me and try to figure out more about what I want this product to look like. And the questions that the uh, the AI asks are actually really good. It's super duper compelling. Um, and I'm actually, I'll show you a few here. So this is the productivity app. So I pasted everything from Google Doc, put it in here. And it starts asking different questions. So look at the first one, okay. Getting started, which platforms do you envision for this app? For example, would you prefer it be web-based, mobile app, etc.? So I'm gonna start with web. Okay, cool. Uh, next, it's gonna ask another question. Okay, building the web app, how would you like to handle your authentication and integration with Google Calendar? Specifically, would you like to use Google Auth, the primary method for signing up and granting calendar access, or do you want an alternative approach? This is another good question. And then I say, okay, Google Auth. And now what I wanna show you is there are a few questions here. Actually, like here's another good one. It's like, okay, you mentioned that you wanted the app to look you know, aesthetically pleasing. What does that actually mean to you? So, so like, give me examples of websites or apps that capture a clean, minimalistic, beautiful aesthetic that you're aiming for. Now this is interesting. So it's asking for examples so it can get inspiration elsewhere and incorporate that in my own application. So I give it answers. Okay, here's a bunch of answers. And then some of these questions it asks, I, I don't know the answer to. I'm like, that's a great question, but I have no idea what the answer is. So I'm going to outsource that, that uh, thinking to them. So that's what I've stated here, is that sometimes I'll go back to the AI and say, okay, how about you choose based off of the things that you've, you've asked me a question, or what do you think about the answer for this? 
And the good thing about this is that this AI is going to give you examples with the questions. So if, for instance, like it gives you a question here and then it says, for example, X, Y, and Z. And then again, it says it gives you a question and should it rely on X, Y, and Z. So it often gives you a question and then it gives you an example to think about. So if you don't necessarily know the answer, you can rely on the AI to help you figure out what that is. And you can see if I go through here quickly, I'm trying not to make you sick. Um, here's one you can choose. I'm not really sure, so you choose the best UX. Um, and here's another one. Which of these would you like? Uh, would you make a more beautiful experience? So like I, I he mentioned, you know, he or her. I don't know how to uh, anthropomorph oh, anthropomorphize. How do you say it? Anthropomorphize. Anthropomorphize. I was pronouncing it correctly. Cool. Anyways, um, they, it, her, he. Uh, they, I basically outsourced it to them. I said, hey, you tell me what the best experience is. And there's a lot of back and forth here. So as I stated in the slide, it could be up to 50 to 20 turns of going back and forth. And once you've gotten to the end, you'll start to see that the AI concludes that, okay, we've done, we've done a good job of going back and forth. Let me get to the end and show you. There's a lot of back and forth. Okay, here we go. All right, so understood. So, so far we have a solid outline before finalizing, da, da, da. So oftentimes it ends with before finalizing. And that's, that's when you know it's getting to the end. Once it's gotten to the end, you then put another boilerplate prompt. So this is another boilerplate prompt that we're going to put in there. And this prompt basically says, okay, now that we've wrapped up what we've done with the brainstorming, I want you now to create a developer ready specification that includes all different types that are important, uh, things that are important based off of what we discussed above. So it's going to basically consolidate all the conversation we just had, and it's going to incorporate that into a spec. And then once we've done that, we have our spec here. So here's our productivity app that goes from to do's to time blocks. And then it goes through, it gives you the key feature requirements, all of that information, uh, the architecture associated in the tech stack. So it says, okay, we're deploying to Netlify. We're going to use Superbase to back end, React for the front end, um, Tailwind CSS for the UI, uh, data models. So this is interesting. So it actually gives you the specific fields for the data models in Superbase, both for the uh, user model and the task model, uh, error handling approaches, testing plans, deployment monitoring, etc. So you're going to keep you're going to take all of this, and you're going to copy and paste that into a smarter model. So we have our spec. So now we need to create a blueprint. And remember, our spec interview is saying this is what we want to build. So this is the this is the what. So now we need to do the how, how are we actually going to build this thing? So this is actually where we're going to pass it off to O1, which is a smarter model. So if you have O1 Pro, you can throw it into there as well. And you're going to copy and paste that entire spec with a boilerplate prompt. In the boilerplate prompt, and there's different types. So Harper gives multiple variations of this in his blog, but this is the one that I use because it's focused on the greenfield approach. Now in here, we can go through this together. So I want a step-by-step -step blueprint building this project. And this is really the most interesting part here. And he kind of regurgitates this multiple times in the boilerplate. But what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, I want you to build a solid plan. I want you to break it down into small iterative chunks that build on each other. So we're going to build things that are small enough to make meaningful progress in the project, but not too big to overwhelm the AI. But here's the next thing, inter interesting thing is he says, okay, once you've built these chunks, I want you to actually go another round and review those chunks again, making them into more smaller detailed steps. And we'll see what that looks down, down, down below in a second. Another important thing I want to call out here is test driven manner. So when he calls out TDD, that means that each one of the steps are going to have to start with a test. And then we'll build the function. So we can create a reinforcement learning tactic, which is something I've mentioned previously. So uh, as an example, if we're going to if we're going to do TDD, we're going to start with a test. Then we're going to build the functionality for that specific chunk. Now, if we write the test, that means that once we've written the function, we can test it against this. And if we get an error in the test, this is going to be a very detailed error. So we can feed that detailed error back into our AI to rewrite the function to ensure that our function can pass this test. So it's a form of kind of like reinforcement learning, not really like reinforcement learning, but it's a it's a feedback loop in it to, into itself. Now we've kind of drafted this out, we have the information, and there's some other elements here you can read later. And this is the spec that I've copied in. So now the AI is going to go off and think through things and it's going to write a first it's going to write a high level blueprint of how we want to build this. So this is the first iteration. But then it's going to write this out into chunks, the iterative chunks that I mentioned previously, big enough for us to make progress, small enough for us to actually not overwhelm the AI. So we have each one of these chunks here. Now, these are the first iteration of the trunks. Now we're going to go into a refined version of this. So the same chunks above, but with more detail. So we're going to do that again. So we can see we have a lot more text for each chunk. And we're going to do this actually one more time. So if we go down here, we'll see 
actually, no, sorry, that was the one iteration. And they went as much detail as possible. As I mentioned in the slide, sometimes it'll, I've done this many times, sometimes it'll go up to three rounds where it has refining chunks over and over and over. So you have more and more refined pieces. So once you have this, it's actually going to create prompts for you. And this is probably one of the best parts of this process where you're outsourcing not only the creation of the spec blueprint and the to do's, but you're also outsourcing the system prompts you're going to feed into the AI to ensure that it's systematically building in the direction it should, which I think is a, a great idea. And this is the next section here. So it says, okay, now I'm going to create code generation prompts for each step. And that's when you have prompt A, this prompt A feeds back into chunk A. So we have chunk A and prompt A, you're basically going to copy and paste this out, you're going to put that into cursor, you're going to have cursor build out that first chunk. And you're going to iteratively work on that first chunk until it's done. And they have each, each one of these. So they have prompt B, which relates to chunk A or chunk B, prompt C, which is to chunk C, etc, 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 all the way until it's done. And once you've once you've gotten this out, this blueprint of how to do this, you're then going to put in one last boilerplate, which is basically asking it to create you a to do list in markdown. And we're going to create this in a markdown, like I've mentioned many times before, is we're going to do this in markdown, because when you do it in markdown, you can actually have the AI follow that to do list going back to the macro micro. So we have macro micro, you're going to kind of feed back and forth into each one of these to ensure that once you get lost in the micro, you can go back to the macro. And your AI is going to check off the to do list. So we have one, two, so these are the different chunks we need to work on. So once we're done with one, the AI will come in and check that off in the markdown. So when the future AIs come back and look at this markdown, they can see that we've already finished chunk one. So now I need to focus on chunk two. And then once we're done with this, we'll check this off, we have a future AI that comes back and looks at the same to do list and says, Okay, I can see that chunk one and two are done. So now I'm going to go to chunk three. And this is going to happen over and over and over because we want to keep on starting fresh conversations and cursor to ensure that we can keep the context window as small as possible. Because from my experience, that's when you get the best results from AI when you're building with AI. And that's what our to do list looks like here. So we have our to do list, and then all the associated chunks and mark down so you can check these off each one of these. So this is chunk A, chunk B, etc, etc, etc. All right, and that's the process. So internet, I hope you found this useful, entertaining. And if you'd like to work with me, I have a company called Gradient Labs, where we help people incorporate AI internally to automate their processes with AI. So if you're interested, there's a free discovery call link below, you can see if there's a good match between us. And with that being said, internet, I will see you next time.